Hello, I'm Cale. I work at the Ancient Technology Centre and I also run Red Squirrel Ancestral Skills. And today I want to talk a bit about tanning, making raw animal hides into a nice finished leather product. I want to talk about the process of how to do that and also the, the archaeology links and the ancestral links too. Um, tanning has been around since the Stone Age, but since the Paleolithic. Archaeologists think the first species of humans to do tanning were Homo habilis. They were making stone tools and they were making scrapers out of just stone tools, just taking off small flakes. And they were doing that roughly 2.6 million years ago. And it's evolved over time with different species of humans. The oldest stone tools that could have been used for tanning in Britain were found at Boxgrove and they were dating back to around 500,000 years ago and that was from Homo heidelbergensis and they were the species that Homo sapiens and Neanderthals both had in common that was one of their common ancestors and Neanderthals as well Neanderthals in Germany they've been found in Neunmark uh, a lake in Germany and there they found a stone flint knife and it had been hafted to the wood using oak tannin. And to get tannin from oak is a complicated process. And archaeologists kind of assume in a way that if there was knowledge for Neanderthals to extract tannin from oak, then they would have had that knowledge of how to get lots of tannin. And that could have been used with, for animal hides as well. So today I'm actually going to show you how to soften a uh, fat tan animal hide. This was a fallow deer and I've done a lot of the stages to this one already. It was just a raw animal hide, it had the fur and it had the meat and the fat and what I've done so far I've scraped both sides, I've scraped all the fat and the membrane off, I've scraped the grain layer off too and it's already sat in 12 egg yolks with just a small amount of water. I stretched it in there and I'm now softening it on this softening state. This is one method of softening. You could also use a rack, which people do. They stretch a hide out and then either use a stone tool such as flint or even a bit of wood, a bit similar to that, and you can soften your animal hide as well. Um, if you think of the animal hide, as a bit of a fabric, as a network of fibres, you need to stretch those open, and that only can happen when it's damp, and then the, the fat, the egg yolk, will get in between those fibres, and I need to stretch it as it dries, and that will keep the, the fabrics, the network open. If I was just to let it dry without, without working it on the softening stake, it would just go all crinkly and hard, and it would, the, the fibre network would close. So that's what this is doing, it's kind of keeping the skin nice and open. And I need to work this until it's fully dry, and hopefully it's going to be soft all over. There are some places where it's dry too quickly, and I'm going to have to re-dip that in the egg yolk and work it again on this softening state. Um, so to do a, a brain tan, or to, to do a fat tan, you need to scrape, scrape it all over, dip it in a fat solution such as egg yolks, people have also used the animal brains as well, stretch it and soften it on a steak, and then the final part of it, which is the tanning part for fat tan, is smoking, and that preserves it and will also make it water repellent too. And the finished product would be a nice soft bit of leather that's going to last a really long time especially if it's looked after. Um, people like I said our ancestors were using stone tools to scrape the hides but they were also using bones they were also using wood. Here I've got a bone scraper that's actually the shin bone of a deer split in half and just sharpened with a bit of stone to make quite a kind of sharp edge. And that's really good for scraping. That would get all the meat and fat and the membrane off as well. So that's another tool that would have been available to our ancestors. I have got examples of different methods of tanning. 
These are bark tan. Uh, this is a roe deer hide that was bark tan with willow. And the bit of drawstring here, that's actually brain tan roe as well. And that just does up nicely like that. And then this, this is a roe deer too. Willow bark tanned again. And just animal fat was rubbed into it as it was damp and that kind of softens it and preserves it and it stops this grain layer from cracking. That's an, a, an additional layer that you can leave on for bark tanning. Now there may be times where you want to leave the fur on and here's an example of this. This is just a rabbit skin that was willow bark tanned. Now, I mainly use willow because it's widely available, it grows back when you cut it and yeah it's a bit, it's not as precious as cutting oak, I couldn't really justify that. Um, yeah these, these rabbit ones, it's just one hide cut in half and these work brilliantly as wrist cuffs to keep your hands warm, really simple and the rabbits they soften really nicely where it's a thin hide. So each animal has a different thickness in its skin and that could be utilised for what you want to make from it. So these work brilliantly as cuffs. Um, and I've left the fur on with this fox hide as well. This, this was a really nice skin. Uh, this was actually roadkill and I just thought the fur was so beautiful. So perhaps in the Stone Age they would just leave the fur on and automatically you could use it as a bit of a neck warmer as a kind of scarf and it's really simple to do so if you were to leave the fur on you would just scrape the meat the flesh and the, the membrane this side and yeah you wouldn't touch touch the fur that side this has been bark tanned as well in, in willow again and other animals can be used as well so here I've got a I've got a fish, I've actually got a salmon skin and it's brilliant because when this was raw it would rot and go nasty really quickly but this has been oak tanned and that's actually now quite a strong bit of leather that will last a long long time. So lots of different animals and fish and all sorts of animals can be tanned. Okay so bringing it back to the stone age quickly, no matter what continent you would have found yourself on if you were in the Stone Age, there would have been people tanning with all different methods as well, whether you were a nomad in Asia using fermented eggs and, and milk, whether you were a Native American smoking the hides, or if you were in North Scandinavia using the bark tan rub. There's so many different methods and people were just using what was available to them and not having such a big impact on their environment as well. If you want to find more out about tanning and courses that are similar to that, then I will be running some at the Ancient Technology Centre later on this year.